Hello there and welcome to Positive TV. You find me today, well, it's not one of England's dark satanic mills. It's actually Kilver Court. It's an incredible old industrial site, once the home of manufacturing, wool manufacturing, and then Baby Sham, and now it's the centre of Roger Saul's empire. Roger Saul was the founder of Mulberry, and now he's opened up this extraordinary place, which we're going to have a quick look around tonight, and we're going to be at the opening of their uh, grand sale. We're going to speak to Roger in a moment, but in the meantime, just feast your eyes on this extraordinary place. It's kind of industrial and yet stunning. <laughs> As I came out of Mulberry, which was my previous career, um, finished about 2004, and at that point the farm around our house came up for sale for the first time for 100 years. So it was, hmm, do we buy it, don't we buy it, is it going to be a housing estate, or, and we bought it and put every last penny that we had into it, and it was 300 acre, wonderful old deer park that really let go, so we completely restored it. And during that journey, my sister appeared in the kitchen one day and said, I, she said, what are you doing, you know, what are you going to grow? And I said, well, I think wheat is the idea because it had been a dairy farm. So she said, well, why don't you grow spelt? And I said, well, what spelt? No idea. Went onto the internet and found that it was an ancient grain. It was highly nutritious, very high protein levels. It had been used by the Roman army as known as their marching bread. And you think of Duracell battery, sort of the rabbit goes further. This was what obviously the Roman army did. And that was really the beginning of that whole process. And we grew our first crop, we learned how to farm organically, we did some conventional beside it, so we got this wonderful apprenticeship in seeing what to do and what not to do. And we had a lovely moment when we grew our first crop of spelt, and we were growing wheat beside it, and we had field by field. And you could see our spelt growing organically with the weeds and the nettles growing up in it, and looking like an absolute mess. And over here, the growth inhibitor, the fertilizer, the weed killer, the pesticide, all being sprayed by a farmer, and this carpet of wheat looking perfect and hedge to hedge, not an insect or a bird in sight. Here's my spelt over here. And that was a lesson, big lesson in learning, well, hang on here, we're spraying all these things, and where is this going? And the next step was the farmer said, that my contractor said, shall I sell this grain for you? Roger, you know, we can sell it and it goes for chicken feed. Well, great, yeah, that's fantastic. And then the sort of word round the brain said, chicken feed, who eats chickens? Me. <laughs> and actually, I had put all those chemicals into effectively my body. And so big lessons like that, learning about organic and what's good for you. Beside that, coming out of that, we kept Kilver Court. This was the headquarters of a mulberry. Back in 96 I bought it and we bought the Mulberry Factory Shop here which has been one of the great sort of factory shop worst kept secrets. So we started our first shop probably in about 1980s, grew it into a million pound turnover and by the time I left Mulberry it was a three million pound turnover. Down here in Shepton Mallet, middle of nowhere, people were coming from Japan, from Sweden, from London, all over the place to get that special bargain. And then locally, people were aspiring to that purchase at, let's say, 30% off or 40% off. So we knew we had already got here an audience that was captive. So as I came out of Mulberry, we started thinking, I wonder if we could take this a step further. Um, so two years ago, we opened the gardens to the public for the first time. We opened a Sharpen Park farm shop, a wellness center, and a cafe, and started catalysting the whole thing. And then a year ago, I thought, right, I'm really going to go for it. Uh, we had a big housing association that um, had their offices here. They moved out literally six weeks ago. And for the last six months, we've been planning getting designer brands in, making a whole regenerated, recycled furniture through to fashion. And that nice idea that actually these products didn't make it the first time, so they haven't sold at top price. So they've got to be regenerated and recycled somewhere. And if we can do that, great. 
Yeah, I mean, the the nice feel um, is not only the fact that it that, that the shop is here. You have so many other things going on as well. I mean, I believe it's possible to get married here and. Um, well, tell me about some of the other activities yeah. that go on. Well, certainly a wedding venue, an amazing garden. We've got some amazing rooms. We've got a lovely little dove cup that people can get married in. And so we're now probably doing 30, 40 weddings a year already. Um, so that's a big string. Um, with the whole site, we hope to regenerate it and do a very simple warehouse hotel. Um, I'm looking to really gather that thing together. So it's like a Kilver Club. So we're talking to one or two watch brands to see if we could do special watch bargain auctions. Because where do all of those tag hoyers and different watches, you know, great sunglasses, and think, where do they go when they don't find a home? They must go somewhere so if they can come here. Um, so if we can get that little club together, where we'll have a pop-up club so people can actually, we'll send them an auction invite and then create a, a bar and a sitting room and then it'll come and it'll go again. Um, I just love that idea of pop-up. I think it's here today and it'll just keep that interest going for people coming back. And I've got a feeling if we do this well, we could repeat this in other parts of the country and the world. So it'd be lovely to see this idea of bringing together great brands, great quality, sustainability, regeneration. I want to do, as part of the new build we're going to do, I want to use old materials and you know, do water source pumps out of the lake and, and really see if we can move with technology and look at that sustainability side. It strikes me as well that you've got a great bit of community going on here. Yeah, well, we're on the edge of Shepton Mallet, and Shepton Mallet, rather like the mill here, has seen great ups and downs. And actually, it's not great at the minute. If you look at the high street, it's like many other town centres. It's really suffered. So I think you've probably got, I don't know, 50 shops in the high street. You've probably got 15, 20 that are empty. That's been like that for 10 to 15 years. How do you change it? Half is pedestrianised. You know, it's that typical small town, 10, 15,000 people that now can't hold it together and what I hope is if we really can pull this off on the edge of Shepton um, and we can bring the designer brands in and you know our aim is to bring at least half a million people over the next four or five years per annum and if you think about that we're probably going to be talking I mean, I've got a hundred people working for me this weekend alone I would think we will be 150 200 jobs or more that's going to come out from here but fascinatingly, the real thing, if you watch small towns like this, it isn't necessarily the shopping street that's gone wrong. It's actually the whole community. This has got some of the most beautiful architecture, woolen mill, you know, the millers, a lot of wealth here back through the 15 to 1700s. So the most wonderful architecture. But the price of houses here is probably 30% less than somewhere like Wells. So it's got this reputation of being downtrodden. But one step up, and if you look at Babington House and Froome, they've already started to see a big shift and people coming down from London wishing to be in the area. So I hope, you know, I certainly don't want to say I can do it, but I, it would be nice to think that we could help regenerate Shepton as well as here. So let's go and have a look at what's on sale then. Tonight is the opening of Gilbert Court Grand Design Emporium and over the next two days we've got a huge grand sale through that door and this emporium here is about 10 different designer brands we brought together as the first step of the Gilbert Court Designer Out of Village. Now it won't just be a village that's about fashion, it's going to be about home, living, restaurants and the gardens and the farm shop and a wellness centre, so it's really hopefully a whole community coming together. And we very much hope that this could be the start of a little bit of regeneration for Shepton Mountain. Ray, come spend! Shop! What's nice is just a general vibe of this is going to be important. It's really great. 